The Samsung Galaxy Mega 6.3 is big, but how much phone is too much phone? Is that even possible? Find out in our review. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Wook. If you're like me, and I know I am, you might think it's a little weird that phones keep getting bigger and bigger when not too long ago, the goal was to make them smaller. Now, we have this, the Galaxy Mega 6.3. Sure, it's got a big screen, but is that enough to make it worthwhile? Well, let's get started by taking a look at the specs. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 has, you guessed it, a 6.3 inch 720p display. It runs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 chipset with a 1.7 GHz dual-core crate processor, an Adreno 305 GPU, 1.5 GB of RAM, and either 8 or 16 GB of internal storage, expandable via microSD. We're looking at an 8 megapixel rear-facing camera with 1080p video capture, and a 1.9 megapixel front-facing camera. Finally, powering everything, we have a 3,200 milliamp hour battery. There's no way around it. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 is big. Now, depending on your point of view and how you use your phone, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. But other than its general size, this is still very much a Galaxy device we're looking at here. The power button, volume rocker, headphone jack, and USB port are all exactly where you would expect to find them. The general feel of the device is solid, yet light, like a much larger version of the Galaxy S4, and it's actually thinner than the Note 2. Its size is probably a minus if you drop it, though, because it might be easier to break, so try to hang on to it. With a resolution of 1280 by 720 on a 6.3 inch screen, we're only looking at a pixel density of around 230 pixels per inch here, which had me concerned before I really got into using the Mega, but it's surprisingly not that much of a problem. Text and icons rendered fairly sharply, and so did video. The display is a TFT LCD, which is a little strange, as Samsung normally uses Super AMOLED displays, but I actually preferred this as the colors aren't quite so exaggerated. The display's brightness is better than average, and black levels are fairly deep. To test performance, we turn to our usual first tool of choice, Antutu Benchmark. We ran the benchmark not once, but 10 times, and took the average of the scores, which ran from around 12,500 to around 13,600. Our final average score was 13,309. Next, we turned to Epic Citadel, running in benchmark mode. First, we used the ultra-high quality setting, and ended up with an average frame rate of around 33 frames per second. Running in just high quality mode up the frame rate to around 57 frames per second, while high performance only bumped it up to 58 frames per second. In real world use, the Mega never felt slow or laggy whether it was launching apps or scrolling through various screens and menus. I tried a quick race in Real Racing 3, and though I may not be great at the game, it performed just fine. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 runs Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean right out of the box, and it's overlaid with the same version of TouchWiz as the Galaxy S4, so it feels very similar, just minus a few features. Due to the large size of this device, it's nice to see a landscape mode included on the home screen for when you want to use it more like a tablet. Now, you don't have to use this, but it's nice to know it's there. This review unit didn't come from a carrier, so it was free of bloatware, unless you're counting the Samsung apps like S-Memo, S-Planner, and S-Translator, which plenty of people happen to like. It's also nice to see features like Watch On included. Sadly, I was a little disappointed by the camera. 8 megapixels didn't sound bad, and even though this is no S4, I was expecting something pretty nice. But the photos I took aren't very sharp no matter what the lighting conditions were, and even using the LED flash didn't help here. Samsung included a whole lot of camera functions like HDR and Drama Shot, but they're not much use if the pictures aren't that great. The 1080p video looks much better, though the colors tend to be a little flat. Motion is nice and smooth, and the image is generally very sharp. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 is powered by a 3,200 milliamp hour battery, which is a bit of a surprise given that the Note 2 has a 3,100 milliamp hour battery. 
but when you match it with the Snapdragon 400 chipset, battery life is pretty good. On the first day of testing, I benchmarked and tested for a few hours before I set the Mega down to work on something else. I came back and grabbed it late the next day, and it was down to around 15%. Basically, as long as you're not constantly watching movies and using the screen all the time, the battery should easily last you a full day, and since the battery is removable, you can always carry a spare. In the end, it's easy to see that this is a big phone built for people who like big phones. We would have preferred a 1080p screen, but still, we're pretty happy with the Mega 6.3 in general. If you'd like to know more, we have a full written review at AndroidAuthority.com. You can find a link to the article in the description down below. Hey, if you liked this video or found it useful, maybe throw us a like or share it with your friends. If you want to stay caught up with everything we do, make sure to subscribe to our channel. I'm Chris Wolk for Android Authority, and as always, thanks for watching.